kick off the New Year's Six for just the seventh time in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl's history. Two top 20 teams meet number nine Florida State, 18th ranked Houston. The Cougars for the first time in 30 years playing in a New Year's Six game. They have one of the most explosive offenses in the country. They won the American Conference and they are the highest ranked team from the group of five conferences. Florida State with one of the best defenses in college football and the Knowles have never lost to a non power five school under Jimbo Fisher. Plus Florida State is no stranger to marquee postseason games and welcome to the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta and hi everybody alongside Brian Greasy. I'm Dave Pash. It is the penultimate day for a college football fan with a college football playoff semifinals later today on ESPN. But first, an intriguing game, Brian, here in Atlanta. A Florida State team that, under Jameis Winston, won the national title two years ago, played in the first college football playoff last year, lost in the Rose Bowl. They're a different team now. This offense isn't about passing. It's Dalvin Cook between the tackles. It certainly is. And I know Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey were in New York for the Heisman ceremony. But you could make the argument that the most explosive back in all of college football this year was Dalvin Cook. Averaged just under eight yards a carry. When he gets to the second level, it's his speed that really makes him unique. Second team All-American, as you see. When you talk with Jimbo Fisher this week, he says the most impressive thing about Dalvin Cook is his tempo as he runs. He's got great speed, but he's got great patience as well. And when he gets to the second level of safeties, as Keanu Neal from Florida tries here, they just have no shot at getting him on the ground. But here's a great look at that vision and that tempo. He pushes the hole, makes the, the safety overplay, and then has that vision and lateral movement to get back in those holes. If these kinds of holes open up against Houston today, they're going to have a very tough time catching them on the second level. Yeah, can Houston get to third down and force quarterback Sean McGuire then to beat them? As for the Cougars, it's been a great year. They lost five games last year. Tom Herman comes in. First time he's been a head coach, and he goes 12-1. and one. Well, you can't say enough about the job that Tom Herman has done. You talk about coming in and introducing yourself to 85 to 100, 18 to 22-year-olds, teaching them a whole new way how to play football, and you win 12 games in a championship, can't say enough. But he's really been dependent on his junior quarterback, Greg Ward, a former wide receiver. Much like Dalvin Cook, they want to get him into the second level, get him in space. They will call routes that he's going to take a shot down the field, and if it's not there, then he just gets outside, and they're going to orchestrate space for him to make these kinds of moves. This is the challenge for Florida State defensively. How do you keep him in the pocket? They will design runs, 12 to 15 of them from Tom Herman. When you have this kind of elusiveness and athletic ability, you've got to get Greg Ward the football as many times as you can. The Houston Cougars take the field here at the Georgia Dome for their first Peach Bowl. The Cougars taking on perennial power Florida State. In the first of six games over the next two days on ESPN. We bring in now the third member of our crew. Here's Tom Luganville. Well, thanks, Dave. And the defensive secondary for Florida State, Jalen Ramsey is the guy, and he's going to be tested in space today. Came into this program as a corner, but then moved over to the safety role and then came back to corner after the departure of Ronald Darby and Xavier Rhodes. He's earned the status of being a high NFL draft choice coming this spring. But if you want to look to the future of Florida State on defense, look no further than safety Derwin James. An Under Armour All-American a year ago, a mid-year enrollee for Florida State. This young man is a difference maker. He's the defensive version of what Leonard Fournette was for LSU as a freshman on offense. And as you watch him today and mature over the next couple of years, he's going to remind you a lot of the late, great Sean Taylor, the Miami Hurricane safety. This defense for Florida State, Dave Bryan, going to be tested an awful lot in space today. Jimbo Fisher. His first bowl game as a head coach was here at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in 2010. They beat South Carolina. Tom Herman, offensive coordinator of the Buckeyes in their run to the national championship. The first of the college football playoff era. And now year two of the New Year's Six, ready to get going. Ty Cummings will kick it deep. Happy New Year from Atlanta. 
And Whitfield will run it out. And he's past the 20 down the sideline. Whitfield finally dropped at the 36. Great start for Florida State. And now here comes Sean McGuire. First bowl start. He did play some in the Rose Bowl in mop-up duty last year. He's 3-1 and one this season as the starting quarterback. And he didn't start until the Syracuse game. Played great on October 31st. Threw for three touchdowns. Everett Golson started more games than McGuire, but he is not on the trip. For personal reasons, stayed back. He was a graduate transfer, so Golson's collegiate career is over. They have a redshirt quarterback, which we'll get into a little bit later, and a guy that's coming in that's highly rated. So it's more for Sean McGuire on the line than just today. Good starting field position from the 37. Here's Dalvin Cook wrapped up in the backfield for a loss by Steven Taylor. Taylor was in the backfield a lot this year. That's 17 tackles for a loss for the junior from Cedar Hill, Texas. Yeah, you're going to hear a lot of the names of Elandon Roberts, number 44, the senior middle linebacker, and Steven Taylor, number 41. Those two linebackers have their hands full with Dalvin Cook in the run game. Dalvin Cook averages eight yards a carry, good for second in the country. And he gets to the 40-yard line here for about four. Let's take a look at today's Chick-fil-A inback players, and there they are, Roberts and Taylor. We talked about Cook in the open, such an explosive back. Roberts, 86 solo tackles. That's second in all of college football, and Steven Taylor leads this Houston defense in sacks, a very aggressive defense led by Todd Orlando. They want to get him in third down situations just like this. And make McGuire beat him. A trail blitz coming. McGuire moving around in the pocket, and the pass off target incomplete. He was trying to hit Whitfield, so a three and out. But it all started for Houston with that negative play on first down. This is exactly what Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, wants. In these situations, here's the safety. He's going to come on a delayed blitz. They want to make Sean McGuire diagnose these pressures, have to get off of his spot and be accurate with the football. He did a nice job of moving in the pocket, but an inaccurate throw forced the punt. Jason Beatty will boot it deep to Demarcus Ayers. A very dangerous return, man. He's got a punt return for a score this year. Excellent boot. And Ayers decides to field it inside his five. And he's wrapped up at the eight-yard line. Terrence Smith with excellent coverage, 55-yard punt. So junior quarterback Greg Ward from Tyler, Texas. A dual threat quarterback, 35 total touchdowns. He rushed for over 1,000 yards, was named second team All American Conference. He didn't start in one game this year, and that was the game they lost against Connecticut. He injured his leg and was out. He broke 14 school of conference records this season. Not a big guy, about 180 pounds, 5'11. And here's Ward out past the 10 to the 11-yard line. Dumped by Javian Elliott, a four-yard run for Greg Ward. You know, talking with Tom Herman, the uh, head coach, he said, you know, Greg Ward's a very emotional player. Sometimes he takes things so seriously if things don't go his way, sometimes it'll, it'll go downhill. He's got to maintain his nerves early in this game. So much of this offense runs through number one. They're going to need him for four quarters. Here's second and six. And Ward with a ton of time. The receiver fell down. No flag. Steven Dunbar lost his feet, and it's third and long. Well, the Marcus Brutus, the safety, came over and hit Dunbar and knocked him to the ground. The ISO out here has got a double move, and Brutus just knocks him down. Could have easily been a penalty on, on Brutus. Ball had not been thrown, though, so legal play by Brutus there. Ward will throw from his end zone. It's a wide receiver screen in traffic. Airs on the catch, but Florida State is all over it. Nate Andrews was there for the Seminoles. Now, there is a penalty marker thrown way downfield in front of the Florida State sideline at the 32-yard line. That's a guilty look. <laughs> 
Charles Kelly there on the picture, the defensive coordinator as well, second After year the as the play, deep coordinator. Personal foul, number 27. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow, Marquez White. Let's check him with Tom. That guy standing right next to that matchup. It was with Marquez White, 27, and Dunbar for Houston. White runs Dunbar down the sideline, out of bounds. Little extracurriculars. I don't think the official on this sideline should have made that call. It was through the natural course of the play. It just happened to end four or five year, uh, yards out of the out of bounds here. Jimbo Fisher at Florida State not happy at all with that call. Well, you saw somebody on the Florida State sideline get run over, and then both players got tangled up. The extra shove at the end. And the penalty. So a fresh set of downs for Houston on the 20-yard line. And on the jet sweep, it's Ayers. Ayers tripped up, picks up about three. White on the tackle. Dave, these are the kinds of plays we're going to see consistently from Houston offensively. Talking with Tom Herman, they don't feel great about the matchup in the middle of the field with their offensive line against this Florida State defensive line. They want to move the point of attack out to the perimeter with runs like that to Ayers. And here's Ward getting the corner on the first down. Great fake to Ryan Jackson. That fooled Florida State. Held the defense. Froze him. And then Ward got the edge. Well, you cannot lose your eye discipline when you play Greg Ward. That's what FSU defensive coordinator Charles Kelly has been talking about all week. They're going to throw it to the opposite side to Ayers. Nice move by Ayers. And he has passed the 40-yard line. So he gets about 11 yards on that play, brought down by Reggie Northrup. When you think about what Houston did last year, they lost five games. They go to Tom Herman, who had not been a head coach before, but has some ties to the state of Texas. As that pass is incomplete, trying to set up the screen to Jackson. Herman finishes third AP coach of the year voting with Dabo Sweeney winning the honor. He told us yesterday he had opportunities to leave but he didn't want to start over elsewhere again and he likes the commitment they made not just to him financially but to the program overall. First down carry for Ryan Jackson to the Florida State 45. 14 yard run for the senior Jackson. Well when you throw the ball back to back times to the perimeter then you take FSU takes their linebackers out of the middle of the field and it opens up for Jackson. This is what they want here Greece up tempo fast as possible Jackson between the tackles to Marcus Walker on the stop. Yeah, we were talking with Tom Herman and Major Applewhite last night. They said we have got to get the advantage by going as fast as humanly possible in this game to tire out a talented defensive front for FSU. Well they have fresh legs at running back because guys are back. We're injured during the season toward the sideline. It's a first down catch for Chance Allen. Wrapped up inside the 30 by Brutus. And a great decision there from Greg Ward. They tried to pump the tunnel screen and get a deep ball down the middle of the field. It wasn't there. So Greg Ward doesn't panic. He just goes back to his original tunnel screen and gets a big game. Here's Jackson again. Man, they are winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. There was a point where Brandon Wilson, a cornerback, was switched to running back four days before the Navy game. He rushed for over 100 yards. Jackson was out with a collarbone injury. But he is back out there in this game. Here's Ward. The pass is high for Ayers. Oh, he had a man downfield near the goal line. Would have been an easy touchdown. Dunbar as Florida State lost him. Now this last five or six play series, Dave, Florida State has not had their best defensive lineman on the field. Now Lauren Stample. And I think that's a big reason why Tom Herman wanted to go so fast to keep him off the field. But he's on now. Big third down and three. Ward 18 and 2 career record as Houston's starting quarterback. Ward finds running room and has the first down before he takes a seat at the 16 yard line. Smart play. Well, Charles Kelly decides to bring a blitz off the edge with JV and Elliott, and Elliott the nickel. And it just opens up a huge lane for Greg Ward. You can't, I know you want to get to the quarterback with a guy like this, with that athleticism, you can't leave lanes that wide open. Ward's pass pulled in by Ayers. Ayers hurdles. The defender, JV and Elliott, scoots out at the 10-yard line. That's six more yards. 
Harris came in with 89 catches on the season, good for sixth in the country. Tenth play of the drive coming up. They're inside the ten. This is the area of the field where Greg Ward has been so effective. 19 rushing touchdowns on the year. Jackson plowing forward will come up short of the first down by a yard. It'll be third and one. Niall Lawrence Stample made the tackle for Florida State. Here's Ward on the quarterback run to the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Twentieth rushing touchdown of the season for Greg Ward Jr. An impressive drive by the Cougars against the number five defense in college football, Florida State. They only give up 16 points per game. Ty Cummings makes it 7-0 Houston. Every player on this Houston offense is asked to be unselfish. This time Carter Wall, the right tackle, and Ryan Jackson, the running back, gets the block to spring Greg Ward to the end zone. Houston scored 40 points a game, Dave. They're off to a great start. Great bowl festivities between the two schools. They actually played uh, Family Feud uh, yesterday at the uh, kickoff lunch. Football Feud. Yeah. Steve Harvey was not there. <laughs> Impressive drive by Houston. Very balanced. Six rushes, five pass plays. Greg Ward with his 20th rushing touchdown. He's accounted for 36 touchdowns this year. Here's Kermit Whitfield had a good return to start the game. And he's past the 20-yard line. A flag is down. Run out of play at the 26 yard line. Florida State takes over inside its 10. And off play action, McGuire throwing it downfield and it's pulled in at the 35. Izzo is out past the 40. Boy, that's twice now. Florida State has started a drive inside its 10 and thrown the ball down the field with success. We'll go back and take a look at that touchdown. Florida State defensively was in good shape. Take a look at the tackle wall and Jackson that get the two key blocks that spring Greg Ward to the second level. Tom Herman, Major Applewhite are going to find ways to get Ward into the second level with the football. They did it three or four times on that 11 play drive for a touchdown. So Dalvin Cook, and he gets walloped in the backfield. Elandon Roberts, one of the best players at any position in the American Conference, made the hit. That's two tackles for a loss now for those Houston backers on Cook. Watching film of Houston's defense, you cannot help but see number 44. He's a heat seeking missile from the linebacker spot. Look at that. I mean, he's not big. He's only six feet tall, 235 pounds. You know, they didn't think he was much of anything two years ago. He didn't play a whole lot. But when this coaching staff came in and Todd Orlando took a look at Landon Roberts and he bought into this system, he's become the unquestioned leader. McGuire hit, throws it up for grabs, and it is caught. Rudolph shoves the defender and is out of bounds inside the 10. Cameron Malvo was right in the face of McGuire, but he completed it to Rudolph for 31 yards. Uh, and Lee Hightower has to make that play. That ball is up in the air way too long. Hightower, one of those three safeties that play a lot in the secondary for Houston. There's plenty of time for him to get over there and make that play. A missed opportunity. First and goal for Florida State. Dalvin Cook averaging a half a yard per attempt. He'll get it here on the stretch. And another violent tackle on Cook. This one by Taylor. Taylor and Roberts with 35 combined tackles for loss on the year. They hit hard. Looks like Will Jackson came in too from that corner spot. In fairness to Dalvin Cook. His legs were wrapped up by Taylor, and then Jackson was able to tee off on him. Second and goal from the eight.
McGuire to the air. Everybody covered. And McGuire's pass incomplete. Jesus Wilson is back on the field after being shaken up. And now Sean McGuire speaking of being shaken up. Yeah, he he held on to that ball till the very end and he's in a lot of pain on the sideline trying to make a play. Gets rid of it late. Oh goodness and it looked like he made he came down so hard on that left foot Dave. Hopefully that's not an Achilles injury. It was Matthew Adams on the hit. Remember we just said Everett Golson's not here so J.J. Cosentino a redshirt freshman from Lower Borough Pennsylvania who did play in a couple games this year but has thrown only six passes he'll go in for now but you certainly feel for a kid that's you know a lot of guys would have transferred by now yeah Jay Coker did he, he went to Alabama he'll play in the college football playoff semifinal tonight at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl against uh, Michigan State but Sean McGuire hung around waited his opportunity but right now J.J. Cosentino has to step up for the Seminoles they've Got a third and goal from the eight yard line. Again, just six passes thrown on the season for Cosentino, a wretched freshman. Cosentino gets hit as he throws. It's caught, but short of the goal line. They'll mark it at the three as Wilson makes the catch. It's fourth down from there. We'll see what Jimbo Fisher does. Missed a field goal on the last possession, but that was a longer attempt. Aguayo is perfect throughout his career. From this distance, and so they'll take the three point. Well, Jimbo Fisher has his work cut out for him now because you practice, you get ready for a month with Sean McGuire, and this is a very difficult defense to prepare for. A lot of different looks and blitzes, and JJ Cosentino maybe has had 15 to 20 percent of that preparation time. And you go into this situation, and they're going to have to rely even more on Dalvin Cook as this game goes on. A 20 yarder as it looked like a while maybe slipped again but he put that through and Florida State is on the board. This uh, game will host the semifinals next year on New Year's Eve. And the championship game the uh, the year after that in the new stadium being built right next door. Aguayo kicking off and this one ended up being a touchback. All right, here's Tom of the latest on Sean McGuire. Well it's taking him inside the locker room in the cart. And right now, and hold on just one second, guys. Got it. I'm just talking to the SID and the support staff here at Florida State. They're going to get to me immediately when they have some answers. Uh, they're doing a pretty serious examination of him right now. And if you saw him going off the field, you could tell he was able to put no pressure on that left leg. Houston ball now, first down. And Ward on the rollout, dumps it off, and... Incomplete intended for Jackson. He couldn't hang on. He had LaMarcus Brutus draped over him. So it's second and ten. Dave, this defense for Florida State is the only defense in college football that did not give up 25 points or more at any point during this season. They have been dependent on all year. The offense has been inconsistent. They just saw their starting quarterback go down with an injury. Doesn't look like he's going to return. This defense has to step up. They've got fifth year senior leaders speckled throughout this defense. It has to be their time to step up. Ward hands it off to Jackson to the 39 yard line or 34 yard line four yard pickup Charles Kelly you know he took some heat last year when he had a lot of players on defense that are in the NFL you know, fans were upset with him but boy this year with maybe players who aren't as talented other than Jalen Ramsey they almost doubled their sack total they've been great in the red zone and they've only given up seven Rushing touchdowns all season coming in. Of course, Greg Ward on the only touchdown in this game. That is Ran the end in. of the first quarter. And when we start the second quarter, it'll be a third and six for Houston. The Cougars in front after one. Start of the second quarter at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in Atlanta. 7-3. Houston leads Florida State. 48 year old bowl game only the seventh time we've had two top 20 teams squaring off. Number 18 Houston with possession a strike thrown by Ward on third and six and they pick up the first down to Demarcus Ayers. This is the matchup that Houston wanted Demarcus Ayers on Javian Elliott. Elliott's a walk on. 
senior for this Florida State defense, but he is the weak link in coverage, and you get your best wide receiver matched up for a third down conversion. And guys, they got Ramsey now shadowing airs as Jackson breaks a tackle and is in the Florida State territory to the 44. That's a 16-yard run for Jackson. And you get these big chunk plays, and Houston wants to ramp that tempo, as Tom said. You mentioned Jalen Ramsey now tracking with Demarcus Ayers. What that did is it took him out of his corner position, and that allowed for Jackson to get a big gainer to the outside. There's Brandon Wilson on the carry, picking up four. So much was made of this matchup coming into the game athletically. Are there mismatches? Can Houston hold up? Well, the great equalizer for that is tempo. The less you tempo if you're Houston, the more you play into Florida State's strengths. Tom Herman knows that. It's good to see them get back to doing that because regardless of what's happening with Florida State on offense, guys, if Houston keeps the football, they've got a lead. They get some more points on the board. Now they take momentum into the locker room here as you head into halftime. And one of Florida State's best defensive players, Lawrence Stample, just went to the sideline because he lost his helmet. He's got to come out from one play. And so DeMarcus Christmas, a freshman, comes in on that defensive line. Second and six for the Cougars. Ward will throw out of the backfield is Wilson. He's inside the 30, near the 20 before he's drilled by James. But Brandon Wilson, a dynamic player, he's the only player in college football over the last 10 years to have multiple touchdowns in a single season on offense, defense, and special teams. I really think outside of Greg Ward he's the most valuable player on this team for Houston in the last three weeks of the season because he has shored up that injured running back position and he's also made plays today at the corner position big plays down the field. We saw the speed on their last offensive play. They're in the red zone now and here comes a reverse and a reverse pass airs to the end zone wide open man touchdown Chance Allen. Demarcus airs with his second passing touchdown of the season. And what timing by Major Applewhite and Tom Herman to call that play. What timing and what a throw. I mean, I thought he was going to throw the ball to the outside of the field, but he throws it back across his body to the middle of the field. Unbelievable throw from Demarcus Ayers. You knew coming into the game, Dave, that Houston was going to let it all hang out, all the tricks out of the bag. And certainly that one paid off. Direct TV takes you inside the drive as we take a look at that last touchdown. Watch Ayers as he comes around. He has to throw this football back across his body. He's going to come from right here, and he's going to look like he's going to throw the ball out here, but this is where the football's going. I think it fooled Florida State defensively. Chance Allen just becomes wide open. Everybody's so focused on Greg Ward on the wheel route. But take a look from this perspective. I think he was, he had a read there. He was going to throw the football first to Greg Ward, and Chance Allen was his second option. And I think in mid-stroke, he says, well, I can't throw it to Ward. I'm just going to move it back <laughs> to the middle of the field. A no-look pass. Well, Derwin James lost him. So did Marquez White. Chance Allen ran right by him. Allen, a transfer from Oregon. His fifth receiving touchdown of the season. 14-3, Houston. Here's Whitfield running it out for FSU. And he can't make it to the 20. Pinned at the 16-yard line. And they're going to hand it to Jacquez Patrick, and he'll lose yardage. Elandon Roberts again in the backfield. Nick Thurman as well. So whether it's Cook at 200 pounds or their big back, Patrick at 235, they still can't get positive yarded. Minus 16 rushing yards in this game. Cook averages 151 per game. That's third in the country. He's got one yard in this game. Second down and 11. They'll try Cook here. No. Lost the ball. Recovered by Houston. A turnover by Florida State. 
Recovered by Trayvon Stewart. Momentum is always such a critical part of football, especially in these bowl games. You have time off, you come back, and you see that ball is out before his knee goes down. Taylor his hand is it. on the ground, so that this, this part is not down because that's his hand, not the back of his hand or his forearm. But if you don't get into a rhythm, you don't have momentum. Alvin Cook, there's been no holes for him. And all of a sudden, he loses his focus for one instant. And he's looking to go up by 18 here late in the first half. Swing it out to Gage. Good play by Derwin James. Gain of two. And you'd have to think with Sean McGuire not 100%. Florida State's inability to run the football so far. They get down 18. This is a different offense than it was under Jameis Winston the last couple of years. They, they have talent, but they don't have the firepower that they had on those two great teams the last two seasons. And again, Florida State only gives up 16 points per game. They've already allowed 14. Second and eight. Here comes another reverse. And airs inside the 10. And he has a first down. It'll be first and goal near the five. I think it's very smart that Tom Herman continues to stretch to the perimeter. He's not saying, oh, I'm just going to run in between the tackles. You got to get to the outside. Here's Ward heading to the end zone. His second touchdown. They made it look easy against that Florida State defense. This is an offense that they make the numbers work for them. Yes, the tempo has a big impact. They keep big defense alignment on the field. But with a quarterback as mobile and as fast and elusive as Greg Ward, a playmaker like Demarcus Ayers, they are going to make the numbers in their favor. And that's what happened on that touchdown. Well, you mentioned it earlier. They have given up fewer than 25 points in every game. The only team in the country to do that, Florida State, but already 21 points allowed here today. Terrific showing by Houston in all three phases. And they will get the ball to start the second half. Let's check in with Tom. Well, Coach, you've showed us various tempos throughout the first half. When you had that pedal to the floor, it seemed to give them the most trouble. Will you continue that pace in the second half? Yeah, we, we have to. We have to go fast to give ourselves a chance on offense. You come into halftime, you're the underdog in the game, and you're leading. So it doesn't get easier. It gets harder. What's the message about finishing? Well, the, the message is don't change. Do what we did in the first half. Uh, play your tails off and, and, and play for the love of the guy next to you, and good things will happen. All right, Coach. Thank, thank you. Look at that. Held Florida State to negative six rushing yards. 21 3 the score at the half. Houston in front. Back to John Saunders and Danny Cannell in Dallas for the Buick halftime report after these messages. Houston leading Florida State as we kick off the New Year's Six. 21 3 at halftime here at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta as we welcome you back to the Chick fil A Peach Bowl. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy. Houston's offense was great, Brian, in that first half. On pace for 100 plays and 500 yards of total offense. Three of three in the red zone. But the defense really was the story for the Cougars, and that's our Capital One pivotal performance. Yeah, they certainly were. And the way that they got after Dalvin Cook is really the story. Dalvin Cook came in, the most explosive running back in college football, averaging eight yards a carry. But look at some of the defenders. This is Elandon Roberts, the senior linebacker, how they are keying in on Dalvin Cook not allowing him any area to get going and then in the passing game they're bringing those linebackers as well Tyler this time getting to the quarterback Cosentino they are disrupting the rhythm of Florida State offensively in the second half Florida State has got to find a way to get Dalvin Cook going in the running game and I think it has to do with that offensive line up front diagnosing some of those pressures 16 yards gained by Cook but he lost five so it's a net of 11 rushing yards for a guy that averages 151 and he rushed for 183 against Florida in the last game of the regular season but nothing doing against that Houston front 
And the Cougars will start on offense here on the third. Aguayo kicking deep. It'll be a touchback. Houston will start on the 25. Here's Tom Luganville. Well, Coach Jimbo Fisher was extremely optimistic coming out of the locker room. I asked him point blank, is this quarterback, Sean McGuire, healthy enough to operate the offense the way you want it to? He said, absolutely. Their problems, and he made no bones about it, are in the offensive line. He feels fine about the quarterback position, wouldn't have put him back in there. But if they can't establish the line of scrimmage and get Dalvin Cook going, it's going to be a long day in the offensive line for Florida State. Well, as you pointed out in the first half, you're right there. He's got some apparatus underneath all that heavy tape on his left leg. Brian talked about that's the pivot foot when you throw. And he struggled when he came back from injury. First down on the 25 for Houston. Here's Greg Ward pitching it late and juggling it is Ayers. And he's taken down for a big loss at the 18 by Derwin James. Great start for the Seminole defense. Yeah, and if this second half for Florida State is going to go the way that they want it to, it's got to start on defense. That's where their confidence has been all year. It's got to come from leaders like Derwin James, Jalen Ramsey, Demarcus Walker. How about James has nine tackles in this game already. The pass is deflected incomplete off the hands of Dunbar. So it brings up a third down in 16. Back to back plays. They're loose with the football. A dangerous pitch on the option that time. A deflected pass and inches away from Jalen Ramsey in a pick six. This third down and long third and 16. Tom Herman's going to play this safe with Greg Ward. Houston playing in its first New Year's Six game since 1985. A loss in the Cotton Bowl to Doug Flutie in Boston College. They're in their first Peach Bowl, and there's pressure on the quarterback. Ward in trouble gets away. And Ward takes off. Steps out well short of the first down. Nate Andrews forced him out. So a three and out for the Cougars to start the third. Great job by that defense. Nate Andrews lost contain initially. But to get Greg Ward out of bounds and force a punt, that's what you will need it if you're Florida State defensively. Logan Piper punted four times in the first half. And a 55-yarder. Jesus Wilson is deep for Florida State. Line drive. Wilson makes the first man miss. But brought down at the 41 yard line. Adrian McDonald on the stop. Can Florida State's offense improve on just 132 yards of total offense and minus six on the ground? The fewest since the first career start for Sean McGuire. That was at Clemson last year. Minus 22 yards in that game. Uh, Luke's talked about talking with Jimbo Fisher that it's got to be this offensive line that, that steps up, and I agree with that. But it also needs to be this coaching staff for Florida State. They have been out coached in the first half, no question about it. You got to come up with some answers for this pressure. McGuire hit as he throws, and a great pass. Pulled in for a first down by Whitfield. McGuire was getting hit as he released that ball, threw it on the money for 14 yards. Some, some days you come out to play a game and it's not going to be pretty. And this is the way it's going to be for Sean McGuire. It's not going to be a great pocket in this second half, but you're going to have to stand in there. You only have one leg and you got to throw the football. That time Whitfield bails him out. But that's the kind of game it's going to be. And we're going to see what kind of guts Sean McGuire has. The interception he threw was on a deep ball where Jesus Wilson was wide open, but McGuire underthrew it. First time they've been in Houston territory in a long time. And here's Dalvin Cook. Bounces off one defender. And gets about three. But they'll take that right now. At least it's not negative yardage. Second and seven. Again, Cook comes in averaging eight yards a carry. That's number two in the country. He's third nationally in yards per game. Fifth nationally in rushing touchdowns. And he basically missed two games. Missed a full game with an ankle injury, most of another with a hamstring. Here's second and seven. McGuire into traffic. Catch is made by Rudolph. He'll be shortened by about three yards, bringing up third down. Roberts and Jackson in coverage there for Houston. Well, that's 
might not look like important plays there. Gain of three, gain of three, but it brings up a third down and three and a half, four yards. And you still have the opportunity and the option to give the ball to Dalvin Cook here. And I think Florida State knows in this territory, it's probably four down territory anyway. So, gotta stay ahead of the change against an aggressive defense like this. Picked up third down earlier on this drive on the pass by McGuire on third and long. This is third and four. Need to get to the 35. McGuire, and it's caught for a first down by Whitfield again. Whitfield, in his first two years, had a combined 16 catches, but with all the departures at receiver, he's become a threat on the perimeter this year. You see those blitzing linebackers and safeties from the second level. The best way to beat that blitz is to replace them with a wide receiver where their initial alignment was, and that's an inside slant. Easy throw and catch. See if they go back to Cook here on first down, they will. And Cook kicks maybe two. Actually, I'm going to give him a yard to the 27-yard line. Steven Taylor on the stop. Taylor a junior. Roberts a senior. Those two inside linebackers for Houston who continue to make plays either at the line of scrimmage or in the Florida State backfield. Well, as you watch the rest of this game at home, keep an eye on 44 and 41. And the matchup on the center for Florida State, Alec Eberle. He's a redshirt freshman. He's been struggling to block those guys on the second level. Last play is another example. McGuire to the sideline. It's caught. Rudolph turns it up. Rudolph is down at the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Florida State. Lee Hightower saved the touchdown, but a 26-yard pass play. Well, you asked about that play action, and how can you get play action if you're not running the football? They've run it a couple times this drive with Dalvin Cook, and they come back to the play action and they find Rudolph open much like they did the first drive of the football game there. First and goal at the one. They got their big fullback in there Stevenson in front of Cook and here's Cook drilled pushes forward in touchdown Florida State. The Knowles finally hit Pater. rushing touchdown for Dalvin Cook one shy of tying a single season Florida State record held by Greg Allen but that drive really was about Sean McGuire that, that third down and long conversion pass that moved the ball into Houston territory playing with that bad wheel and Florida State gets a touchdown They're playing for their 50th win for these seniors Jimbo Fisher is going to find out about the medal of this team in the second half get a three and out and touchdown is a good start. They pass Brian Gracie Tom Luganville. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl 48th playing of this game seventh between top 20 teams. Another touchback Houston will starts in Florida State territory. Ward down he goes a loss of two on the play. Ward is down after being injured on that run. The backup is Kyle Postma who led Houston to a 20-point fourth quarter come from behind win against Memphis started the following week when Ward was injured in a loss though against Connecticut. They're still looking at Ward in midfield. So sophomore Kyle Postma from Katy Texas helped Houston to a big win against Memphis this year when Ward got injured in that game. He's made some plays. He'll throw it here on second and 12. Excellent play by Brutus taking down Dunbar. Another negative play. Well, that game against Memphis, he saved the Houston team. And really, you know, they were not doing anything offensively. They hadn't scored a point. They insert him after Ward gets injured, and they're down 20 to nothing, and he brings them back to win that football game on the road. He'll roll out here. Short throw. And it's going to be a long uh, fourth down here. Dunbar on the catch. Fourth and about eight. Houston will likely punt here and try to pin Florida State deep. And Ward with the helmet back on. Good return next series. Tom Herman's got to feel pretty fortunate that uh, 
he's had Greg Ward as much as he has this season that he stayed as healthy as he had. He missed obviously that one game and part of another. But other than that, only at 185 pounds, he stayed pretty healthy. Although we shouldn't be surprised, Postman did well when he came in. Tom Herman helped Ohio State win last year with a third string quarterback. That's going to be down as it checked up or was hit around the 10 yard line. And he'll spot it at the 11. Delvin Cook gets loose. Best run by far. Nine yards for Cook before Brandon Wilson makes the tackle. You wonder, Houston is not a huge defense. Are they getting one down perhaps up front? Potentially keep an eye on the inside run from Dalvin Cook. Jimbo Fisher loves to get in tight sets. You see both tight ends here on this play are in wing sets. They love to run the football from this set. And they will. Cook straight ahead. And Houston met him at the point of attack. He'll be short. Third down. Jared Carter, redshirt freshman, was in there. But again, he's D lineman. I mean, you're not talking about a bunch of huge guys up front against a, a bit, very big Florida State offensive line. But I like the approach and, and the change by Randy Sanders and Jimbo Fisher to bring those tight ends in because you can protect the edge of your formation. Houston has been blitzing off the edges and getting into the legs of Dalvin Cook. When you bring both those tight ends in, you protect the edge and allow your offensive line to come off. Ten in the box here for Houston. And Cook able to power forward and get the first down. Boy, it looked like he wasn't. Looked like that hole was going to converge. But he was able to move the sticks. A team Florida State that averaged 32 points per game. Ran the ball extremely well without a lot of attempts. They were 13th in the ACC in rushing attempts. McGuire with only 10 completions. Now, per completion, he's averaging about 19 yards. They've been getting big plays through the air. McGuire throwing it into double coverage, and it's intercepted again. Trayvon Stewart with another pick. Where was McGuire throwing that one? This is a product of having to protect the quarterback and pick up blitzes, and that affects your flare control. So take a look. Dalvin Cook has to pick up a blitzing linebacker. Here he is right here. He's going to pick up the linebacker. So there's Dalvin there. He's going to come pick up the linebacker. That's going to leave nobody out here on the outside, and Trevon Stewart is able to drop right underneath. There's no flare control. The McGuire has to know that, Dave. You got to know that your back's been eaten up and the, the integrity of the route is not there. And that's what allows Stewart to back up and make that easy interception. Well, I could read Jimbo's lips when Sean McGuire came out. He said, Sean, what are you doing? Greg Ward is back out there, quarterback. So he's all right. I'm going to hand it off on first down. And Jackson will lose yardage. Jalen Ramsey, the All-American DB, made the hit. That's as difficult as it gets, Dave, to know, okay, I'm getting that pressure, and so I have to know that my back is going to be eaten up. Therefore, I can't force that ball down the field because I don't have the proper structure of the route. That's what Randy Sanders is saying. Listen, you have to know all of that. You have to know what every single player is going to do and then make that decision in real time to protect the football. But Florida State's defense comes back with a tackle for a loss, putting Houston behind the chain. Second down and 12. Ward swinging it out to Gage. Gets a block from Allen. And then Derwin James just throws him out of bounds again. At the 48-yard line of Florida State. So Florida State has been better defensively at the point of attack here in the third. We go to the fourth now. The Houston Cougars leading Florida State by 11. Let's see what happens here on third down. Ward rolling out and a sliding grab made for a first down by Stephen Dunbar. Houston's just making plays. That's the bottom line. They've made more plays on offense than Florida State has in this game. Yeah, these balls aren't perfectly thrown. We saw one of DeMarcus Ayers, very similar. Had to come back and catch the football. Florida State, you would think, has to hold Houston to a field goal. Can't get down 18 points. 
considering they've only scored 10 through three plus quarter. Not much on the handoff. Jackson gets maybe a yard. Tackled by Northrop. Just to go back to that last play, it's a great recognition by Greg Ward to know that their best defender, Ramsey, came on a blitz, and I had one on one with one of my best receivers on a safety to take that shot downfield. It's great awareness by Greg Ward. What we haven't seen on the other side from Sean McGuire. Houston taking some time off the clock now. Second down and now. On the Florida State 22. Houston trying to win 13 games for the second time in the last four years. They did that back in 2011. Ward on the rollout. Throws and it's nearly intercepted and should have been by Derwin James. Does not have a pick this year. He's done just about everything else defensively. He had a beat on that one. He did great break on the out route. This is the third time they've tried to throw this corner out. James reads it perfectly. Just unable to finish the play. Goes back to what we said earlier, though. Houston's making plays, going down and catching the ball near the ground, intercepting tipped balls. Florida State unable to come up with the plays in the second half. Can they get a stop here on third and nine? All out blitz. Here they come. Ward in trouble. Gets rid of it. To the end zone. Incomplete. Allen laid out for it, but could not get there. It's fourth down. Andrews in coverage, and Andrews hurt himself. Got tangled up with some of the camera operators, the photogs uh, on the back line. Boy, a great effort there by Allen. Great effort by Ward standing in there. All out pressure. This is the right read. It's where the ball's got to go. You got to take a chance down the field. Charles Kelly's defense gets off the field. Ty Cummings has yet to miss this year. Seven of seven. And this 39 yard attempt is good. But Florida State had to have that stop. They got it. 14 point lead for Houston. Chick fil A Peach Bowl kicking off the New Year's Six. And it's the team from the Group of Five Conference, Houston. Proving that it belongs in this game, no doubt. 24-10, they have outplayed Florida State throughout. A field goal by Ty Cummings of 39 yards extends the lead to 14, and now Florida State needs two touchdowns in less than 13 minutes. Whitfield will take a knee and will come out to the 25. This is a two-score game. It's the fourth quarter. This kid has waited his entire career for this opportunity, and he still has a chance here in the fourth quarter. And, you know, this is it's not going to be easy, uh, but he's on the field, and he has the opportunity to make amends for the way the first three quarters have gone. And here comes a reverse on first down. Whitfield barely got back to the line of scrimmage. I'm down here, guys. I'm just watching the relationship between quarterback coach Randy Sanders and Jimbo Fisher and Sean McGuire. And, you know, to Brian's point, uh, Sean McGuire has to have a short memory. And he's getting beaten up while he's on the field. And then when he comes onto the, off of the field, of course, he's getting bombarded with coaches and that, and that nature, too. So he's going in, and, and you can tell there's not a lot of confidence in his body language right now. He's going to have to weather the storm. He tried a trick play. Tom on first down got nothing. Now this pass is caught. Pulled in at the 29, only a four-yard pickup for Wilson. I, rem I was trying to think during a timeout. You know, I've, I played in 1995 in the Alamo Bowl against the Texas A&M and R.C. Slocum, that wrecking crew defense. And they had a month to prepare, and they brought all kind of blitz at me. They hit me every which way from Sunday. And it reminds me of what Sean McGuire is going through right here. It's not going to be pretty. You just have to continue to stand in there and throw the ball and have confidence despite what's happening around you. Got to get six yards here. Keep this drive alive. Third down from the 29. McGuire close to the first down is Wilson. He appears to have it. Well, you, you got to think, too, that McGuire has so much on his mind, not just today. He's a junior, so he's going to be back. But DeAndre Francois, true freshman quarterback, we watched him practice this week, look good. They've got Malik Henry coming in next year. Uh, it's not a guarantee that McGuire is going to be the starter next year. He wants to end 2015 on a good note. He may have been thinking about that coming into the game. I guarantee he ain't thinking about Francois or Henry right now. He's thinking about just getting the ball down the field. 
Play action here. Got a man deep. Can he get it there? He does. It's Rudolph inside the 10. It's a Florida State touchdown. No under throw on that deep ball. That was on the money, 65 yards. Just keep hanging in there, hanging in there. He's been knocked around. He's had some throws downfield that have been inaccurate. But when you face a pressure defense like this, there are going to be some opportunities down the field. And that throw right there for Sean McGuire brings him within seven points and brings his confidence back into this game. Tenth touchdown pass of the year for McGuire. Seventh receiving touchdown for Rudolph. Those receivers have gotten separation, but this is the first time that Florida State is connected. McGuire puts it through. It's a one-score game. Sean McGuire's confidence restored, perhaps. Florida State back within seven. Florida State has been outplayed throughout, but in the game, only down seven. A 65-yard touchdown catch by Travis Rudolph. He has a 180 yards receiving on the day. Houston will start on its 25. Now Houston get up there to snap it quick. Out in the flat, running room for Jackson. He's got the first down past the 40. Out near midfield after a missed tackle. Houston caught Florida State napping there. They weren't lined up. Well, he caught, they caught Charles Kelly bringing a field pressure is what happened. They tried to get after the quarterback on third down, and the tempo caught him off guard. Inside 10 minutes to go now in the fourth. Jackson trying to get outside, cannot against Demarcus Walker and Terrence Smith. Boy, Walker, a second team all ACC guy. He had two sacks his first two years total, getting a chance to play more with all those guys now in the pros. And he had 10 and a half sacks, 15 and a half tackles for a loss during the regular season. He really benefited from new defensive end coach Brad Lawing coming over previously at Florida, South Carolina, coached some really outstanding players. Jadavian Clowney, chief among them, is a huge help to Demarcus Walker and his ability to rush the passer. Ward will throw it out in the flat to Brandon Wilson, and Wilson has the first down. We talked about the importance of Wilson, not only on defense, but on offense as well. Makes a play out of the backfield. How about the response by Houston after the Florida State big play? They maintain aggression, right? That's what Tom Herman told Lutz right at halftime. We have to continue to play the way that we were playing in the first half. Game clock to 903. Game clock issue. I also think it tells you a lot about these kids too at Houston. The reflection of their coach. Keep the metal down, the foot on the gas pedal, and continue to attack both offensively and defensively. And Coach Herman told us that, hey, the hardest thing when you take over a program is getting seniors to buy in. But he says they were the first ones to buy into what they were doing, changing the culture at Houston. Fresh set of downs, pump fake, Ward hit, and throws it away. He was in the pocket. There was a receiver in the area, so no grounding. That was a great play by Greg Ward. I mean, it looks like an ugly play. But they're trying to throw that pump fake and get the ball down the field and continue to be aggressive in play calling. It wasn't there, and he knew that the pressure was bearing down on him, so he threw it two rows up in the stands, but it was over the head of a wide receiver. That's a that's a great play by a quarterback. On second and 14, the catch made by McCloskey. Good ankle tackle at the 40 by White. So about six yards on the pickup, third and eight coming up. It's a big difference between a seven-point lead and a ten-point lead as we go under eight minutes in this game. You've got to be smart with the football. If it's there, you'd love to get a first down here, but protect the football and at least give your kicker an opportunity to make this a two-score game. And that's why that stop by Florida State was so big last time they were on defense when they held Houston to a field goal when they got in the red zone. The Knowles bring pressure. Ward has time. And the pass on the money to Ayers. First down. Great throw by Ward. They found the matchup that they wanted coming into this game. Demarcus Ayers on JVN Elliott. 
with inside leverage. There's no way Elliott is going to guard Ayers on an out route. They go quick here after the 20 yard gain, run the ball. Brandon Wilson doesn't get much. Brought down by Derek Noddy after a one yard gain. That's what you talk about coaching, Dave, and finding matchups. And if you, Charles Kelly wants to bring pressure as he did on that third down, why wouldn't you take Jalen Ramsey and play him on the best receiver for Houston? Why do you leave your least talented cover corner, Javion Elliott, on the best player for Houston? That's where matchups and coaching come into play. Yep, great question. Second down and 10 on the 19 yard line. Inside seven minutes. Swing pass. Airs. Spins away from one man, and Ramsey got a hold of his jersey and takes him down. A gain of two. A third down and eight again. Ayers does it here. Let's see if they, they yeah. decide to bring pressure again, whether they leave Ayers and Elliott. And they, right now, Elliott is lined up over Ayers. You think they took Ayers on purpose and moved him over to this side, away from Ramsey? I wouldn't doubt it. One second. Third and eight. We saw Ramsey line up. He's at the top of the screen, so they shifted Ayers over. Third and eight. Ball on the 17 yard line. Here comes Ramsey, and they leave the receiver wide open. Chance Allen into the end zone. Touchdown. What a great call by Major Applewhite and Tom Herman. Well, and a complete bust by Florida State defensively between Lamarcus Brutus and Jalen Ramsey. Both of them decided to come. If the corner is going to blitz, then the safety has to protect him over the top. And it just didn't happen. Here comes Ramsey, and Brutus came as well. You show the all 22 guys, you'll see both those guys come, and just a complete miscommunication. As if to say, how can we make that mistake at this juncture of the game when we finally got it down to one score? Great response by Greg Ward. His first touchdown pass of the day, 17th of the season. Chance Allen now with two touchdown catches. Oregon transfer. One after makes it 31-17 Houston. First time this season Florida State has allowed more than 25 points in a game. Might it cost them the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl trophy. We welcome you back to the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Houston with its longest possession of the game. 12 plays, 5 minutes. They go 75 yards to go back up by 14 points. They've run 91 plays to only 55 for Florida State in this game, and it will be a touchback. On the last possession, Sean McGuire regained some confidence with a long pass to Rudolph for a touchdown. There's still plenty of time for Florida State. Down two scores. Houston bringing pressure. Here's Cook out of the backfield past the 30. Cook near the 45 yard line. So they throw it to Cook. He did have 22 catches, about two per game during the regular season. Gets 21 yards there through the air. Cook, for the most part, though, has been shut down, certainly. As a runner, he's got 33 rushing yards on 18 carries. McGuire, wide open in the middle of the defense, is Rudolph again near the 32-yard line before McDonald brings him to the ground. Most interesting thing now is how will Todd Orlando and Houston defensively play in this last five and a half minutes of this game? Will they continue to attack and bring pressure like they have all game? Or will they sit back like they did on that last play in zone and let Sean McGuire have time to throw the ball down the field? Looks like right here they're going to bring some pressure. And McGuire gets away and throws it away. There was a receiver in the area. Elandon Roberts flying into the backfield. Man, that guy's been all over the field for Houston. Senior from Port Arthur, Texas, who was seventh in the country in tackles this year. He's got a couple for a loss in this game, three for a loss for Todd Orlando's defense today. Florida State down 14 points, just had to burn a timeout. 5.22 to go. McGuire's pass caught inside the 15 by Kermit Whitfield. A big throw by McGuire. Yeah, big time throw there from McGuire, and a good sign that uh, he hasn't let all of the distractions of the three interceptions earlier in this game. 
prevent him from being aggressive, throwing the ball down the middle of the field here late in the fourth. Three of four for 61 yards passing on this possession. They need six. McGuire to the end zone. Great grab. Touchdown, Wilson. Jesus Wilson stuck his arms up, snagged that thing for six. Uh, that's a big time play from Bobo Wilson. They need him to make a play late in the game. It's been great on special teams all year. This was a great route. It was an out and up against tight man to man coverage on Brandon Wilson, and then an even better catch. Houston, yeah, Houston's been making plays like that. Florida State hasn't. Wilson did there for his third receiving touchdown, a five-play, 75-yard drive that took just 113 off the clock. Aguayo's extra point, and it's back to seven with plenty of time left. 455 on the clock after this incredible grab by Wilson. Houston had a big lead at the half. Florida State came storming back to get within seven. The Cougars then put together their best drive of the game. But then Sean McGuire responds. He's got touchdown passes on consecutive possessions. Now it's Greg Ward's turn to see if the Cougars, who have not beaten a top 10 team in a bowl game since 1979, and are playing in their first New Year's Six game in 30 years, can extend their lead again. They're gonna have to move the football. Florida State with two timeouts, plenty of time on the clock, 4.55. The Cougars, the first team this year to score this many points against the Knowles defense. And how about this, a, a pooch kick. It's fielded at the 18-yard line. And a huge running lane for Dunbar. Finally dragged down at the 45-yard line. A risk by Florida State not to just kick it deep. maguire has got the leg to force a touchback. Well, the Marcus Brutus had a chance, number 42 in red. He's the unblocked player. He had a chance to make the play right there as well as Reggie Northrup, neither one of them able to get Dunbar on the ground. It sets up Houston in plus territory. We've seen Houston have to take a knee in the end zone on almost every kickoff. Florida State decides to go with the pooch kick, hoping that the ball will hit the ground or Dunbar will muff it. He didn't, and then Florida State forgot the tackle. From the 45-yard line, here's Ayers, no running room. Somehow turns it back up, tiptoes the sideline, and actually got back to the line of scrimmage. Jimbo Frisch Fisher laying into his place kicker a while there on the sideline. That's a player execution error that could be dramatic for Florida State here. If we've been talking all game, guys, uh, games are they're lost. They're not won. Who makes the most plays? Who makes the fewest errors? That's why Houston's where they're at right now. Well, and that's that's you know one of the best place kickers to ever play in college football. And it's not just about putting the ball through the uprights. It's about the entire game and all your responsibilities and executing. They run away from the blitz. Ward. Leveled at the 40 yard line by Nadi. When you say an execution error, is that, did he on his own decide to kick it short as Ward is shaken up? Hold on yeah. to that thought. Let's talk about this here. Ward hurt again, grabbing the lower left leg. That appeared to be what he injured earlier this half. Well, Derek Nadi, the defensive tackle coming from behind, hit him hard. And Ward went down awkwardly on the turf. Here comes Naughty from behind 91 there and he makes that cut when he comes down then he lands on the back of his left leg. They're in good hands with Kyle Postma if Greg Ward is unable to return. It's not uh, it's not like what Florida State was dealing with in the first half where you have a, a big drop off to Cosentino. Do you lose the run option though with Postma. No Postma is a he played receiver the first game of the year for crying out loud. He's a great athlete.
Postma will run, gets hit, breaks a tackle, and powers to get the first down. He got drilled by Ramsey and Brutus. Postman's not a huge guy. He's just over 200 pounds, but he moves the sticks. Great job by McCloskey, 45, the tight end. This is just a quarterback counter. Great play design, recognizing pre-snap that Florida State was light into the boundary defensively, and they wrap McCloskey around, gets a block, and then Postman with great second effort. Now they can start to burn the clock here. 335 and counting. They're inside the 35-yard line of Florida State with a seven-point lead. Postma on the quarterback run the other way. And this time, he's corralled after a gain of one by Andrews and James. We talked about the chess match, these coaches coming into this game. We talk about matchups and finding those matchups. Houston offensively, they have not run many plays into bad looks. And they have not had many negative plays. But on the flip side, Florida State has had a lot of negative plays offensively. And right now, I think that's reflected in the scoreboard. Houston again taking time off the clock. We're inside 250 to go in the four. Second down and nine. Hand off. Brandon Wilson. Excellent play by Tyler Hunter. Down at the 30 yard line for a three yard pickup. And a timeout called here by Florida State. Remember, they had to burn one on their last possession. Third and seven for Houston at the 32. Florida State stacking the box. No safety deep. Postma finds a running lane. First down and more. Postma inside the 10. Postma inside the five. First and goal for Houston. They brought the house. Postma found the running lane for 29 yards. You live by that blitz, that double A gap, and you die by it. Jackson, the running back, picks up Brutus. Great recognition all game really by this offensive line by Houston and the backs and protection Jackson protects his quarterback and gives him a lane for a huge first down. And Houston going to take the play clock down here. A one score game. Postma won a game for him earlier this year against Memphis started the following week. They lost. That was their only loss this year it was against UConn. Boy, they just got the playoff, and they get into the end zone. Ryan Jackson with a touchdown. Ryan Jackson, who had a collarbone injury in the regular season, is back. He has been a huge factor. In this game today, with Kenneth Farrell unable to go save one series. Ty Cummings on for the point after. Back to a 14 point lead. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead, Luke. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm standing here on the sideline, and this is the type of season Houston's having. Tom Herman is running a sub 4-4 down the white line here to try and get a timeout call. They snap the ball, they score, he turns around and just smirks at me. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing he's not as fast as he thinks he is. I don't know that there's a better job. I know that Tom Herman didn't win the coach of the year nationally, but it would be hard to convince me that there's another coach in America who's done a better job than Tom Herman this year. And told us uh, he was very thankful for how the athletic department stepped up, essentially doubling his salary, helping out the assistant coaches as well. He, he loves where he is. He loves the players. He could have taken a job in the SEC, but he elected to stay at Houston instead of trying to go rebuild another program. He ranked pretty high coming in next year. You Dave. would think, with all the guys they have back in offense, they do lose a lot of their secondary players. Here's Whitfield on the return. A flag comes down. Whitfield tackled at the 20 yard line. Jimbo Fisher, though, deserves a ton of credit for what he did with, with this team to lose all those NFL guys, both sides of the ball, including your quarterback, who's the top pick in the draft and is playing better as the season goes along in yeah. Tampa. And you've got a young team. Everett Golson was their only scholarship senior on offense this year. And he was a graduate transfer, so they got everybody back on their two deep on offense. 
Uh, they do lose some, some players on defense, assuming that Jalen Ramsey goes to the NFL. He's a junior, but the job that Jimbo has done to get this team 10 and 2, pretty good. Good pass. McGuire hits Wilson. And they can score quick. They still have a shot. Now Wilson's shaken up. Clock stops to reset the chains with 57 seconds left. Two Houston verbal commitments are playing as Under Armour All-Americans. That's never happened before, and it's a tribute to Tom Herman. We talk about changing culture and changing a brand. That's what he's done, and it's resonating with kids. And he is 57 seconds away from their 13th win. He'd be just the second coach since 1900 to win 13 games in his first year. Chris Pierce and the other at Boise State a decade ago. Down the middle. Ooh, that might have been a touchdown if Rudolph caught that. He couldn't catch up to it. 50 seconds to go. This holds up. Florida State will lose for the third time this year. And again, one of their losses. A blocked field goal return for a touchdown with no time on the clock by Georgia Tech. Here's a shot down the field, just overthrown. Rudolph, the intended receiver, with Brandon Wilson running with him step for step. Boy, and that was a great throw there. That was on the outside shoulder, just where you want to lay it in there. And Rudolph, kind of with a half hearted effort at it with one hand, you got to turn around, flip your hips, or at least dive with two hands. 44 seconds left in this game. You don't hold anything in the tank. McGuire rolling out here on third down and 10. And it's incomplete. Tried to hit Patrick. Could be the final play for the Seminoles in 2015, fourth and 10. Houston playing in a New Year's Six caliber bowl for the first time since the 1985 Cotton Bowl. This is their first Peach Bowl appearance. Last year, they had the largest come from behind win in bowl history. This would be one of their biggest wins in bowl history. And they're one play away from making it happen. McGuire looking, throwing, intercepted. Will Jackson on the return, and that'll do it. All right, isn't that appropriate that Will Jackson, the senior, the best player, in the secondary for Houston, one of those seniors that was quick to buy in to what Tom Herman was selling back in January, along with the Landon Roberts and Taylor, and all of them, there they come, Bonner. That, that feels pretty darn good, especially in the first year in a new program, everything they've accomplished together, and I hope he didn't have his grill in right there. That <laughs> grill might get ruined. But again, to go to a program and win over the seniors, that's the hardest thing to do. This is a program that has been in bowl games, but has not been winning a lot of games the last few years. But Tom Herman, in his first season at Houston, gets win number 13. Only he and Chris Peterson, over the last 100-plus years, have won 13 games in their first year as a head coach. Greg Ward on the field for the final play as Houston kicks off the New Year's Six with a 38-24 victory over a top-10 team. The Cougars, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl champs. This wasn't, this wasn't, people look at this score, and if they didn't watch this game, you can't say that Florida State just kind of slept walk into this game. They were prepared to come in and play physically, but they just got beat on the field by a better team. And Tom Herman, the winning head coach, standing by with Tom Luganville. Got the little guys here with you, Coach. Congratulations. You know, you hear the cliche so much about changing the culture, getting guys to buy in. But the seniors, that's the group that's hard to get to buy in. What do you have to say about them tonight? It's the most important senior class in the history of the University of Houston football program. They bought in from day one in January, and they, they never looked back. They never questioned. They never uh, uh, evaluated. All they did was trust us and drag the rest of the team with them. 
for you personally as a first year head coach you've been a part of a lot of different programs successful ones ones that were struggling to build how does this feel for you and your family uh, it's the greatest greatest win in my my life this is uh, unbelievable hats off to our staff and our players and our administration for for making all of this possible go tackle that shiny trophy and share it with your kids all right thanks Luke all right well, that says something. He just said it's the biggest win in his life. He just won the national championship last year as the offensive coordinator at Ohio State. Certainly a different thing when you have your own program. And he turns this Houston Cougar team around from a five-loss squad last year to a 13-win team as they win the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, beating Florida State 38-24. Great year for our crew. Thanks to Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville, our entire outstanding crew. I'm Dave Pash. So long from Atlanta. Houston kicks off the New Year's Six with a win.